Yo, what's good, YouTube? Zamco here, aka Scoop, back with the uh, Pokemon Battle Federation Season Five, Week Number, uh, Week Number Three, Team Builder. Um, we played the Westbeck Town Weezings in Week One, and we played the Goldenrods Abstractas Week Two. We are two and two with a negative two differential. We're one and one with a negative two differential going into week three here where we're going to be playing the Gainesville Gallades coached by A1 Gallade, also known as Jonathan, or simply A1. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, he is two and oh, and we're, like I said, one and one. Of course, we do have uh, Tapu Bulu, Suicune, as you can see on screen, uh, Mega Charizard X, Crobat Fortress, Metacham, Acelgore, Stunfisk, Smeargle, and Frostlass, where our Z Move user is uh, Tapu Bulu only. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, my opponent is, like I said, Jonathan or A1. I'm going to call him A1. <clears throat> this is his first draft league. Um, so uh, he, he's very inexperienced in the format, but he's a really good uh, OU player. So I assume that uh, that would translate uh, into his uh, draft format battling skills um, if he wants it to, if he takes it serious, which I think he is. He's taking incredible amounts of time on prep for weeks one through uh, three so far. So... Uh, Anyways, <clears throat> like I said, um, he's a really good player, so I assume that's going to translate into, you know, the draft league format as well. Anyways, his team is Mew, um, Mew, Mega Altaria, Tentacruel, Alola Muck, Gorgas, Talonflame, Klefki, Peliswine, and Terrakion as seen on screen where his, uh, his Z-Move user is Mew, and Mew only, as well as Bulu being my only. Um, <clears throat> something I took of, of note going into this match was that uh, Mew had six kills going into the match, I'm pretty sure. Um, so that's pretty frightening. Uh, I know Mew has the potential to just run through my team, especially like a sub, Calm Mind, Psyshock, Roost variant just runs through my team, beats uh, literally everything. So that's uh, that's something to note. Is uh, I'm gonna want to <clears throat> not let that thing set up and apply offensive pressure throughout the entire game, as well as having like some alternatives, uh, tricks or aces up my sleeve for a Mew that gets out of hand. Um, as you can see, <clears throat> the top row is the team I bring this week. Um, Suicune. Suicune, Charizard, um, Fortress, Metacham, Stunfisk, and the uh, Frostlass. <clears throat> The reason I bring these mods in particular is because um, the plan is to bring hazard stack plus offense and then checks to what I think are his two biggest threats being uh, Mew and either set up Talonflame or set up Mega Altaria which, uh, which between Stunfisk and and Fortress, I can handle that as well as Suicune to an extent as well. Um, as you see here on screen, Suicune is boasting a defensive set this week. Um, very, very powerful uh, defensive mon here. Um, with Calm Mind, just makes it so annoying. This is uh, this is the Calm Mind Rest Sleep Talk Scald set, pretty standard. Um, I got enough speed to outpace a few things on his team. Um, off the top of my head, I don't. I don't remember, so I have to look at his uh, team a little bit for a sec. Um, I think it's like an uninvested Mew. Um, I speed creep an uninvested Mew. 
maybe I think that's what it is. Um, just in case, you know, you never know. Um, it might come down to like Suikun versus Mew at the last game, and if he's got a slow, bulky Mew and it's at like six percent, I would hate to um, not outspeed because I didn't put a little speed investment when I didn't need that much defense investment, anyways. Um, so yeah, Suikun's just naturally good against his team. Um, things like Talonflame and Terrakion have a hard time dealing with this thing, as well as like uh, just being a fine problem for Palace Wine and um, did I say that? If I said that already, I meant Terrakion first. I meant Terrakion and Talonflame and then Palace Wine. Um, so Gorgas can check it pretty well. Um, Mega Altaria can check it pretty well, but uh, that's okay. I got some other things for that. Um, if he doesn't bring sub Calm Mind or Calm Mind Psyshock, if he doesn't bring Psyshock on you, then uh, he's got a real problem with uh, this Suicune, even with checks like Tentacruel and Mega Altaria. Um, if I get enough Calm Minds up, I can just beat his you know entire team. Minus Gorgast, which can like uh, two-hit KO me back. So um, Tentacruel could potentially pack Haze, Mega Altaria. Um... I'm not sure what. I guess it could set up alongside him and then just beat me. Um, Mew could even be like a psych up variant with uh, Psy Shock. Pretty, uh. Well, that's something that I could. that wouldn't surprise me. It's pretty uh, expected, I guess is the word. Or a Swords Dance, Natural Gift, Talon Flame to catch me off guard. Or an SD Terrakion. Or just like enough offensive pressure in general just kind of hurts my team anyway. Um. Next up is another mon I wanted to uh, bring this week. Mega Charizard X. Um, <laughs> says submission. That's supposed to be um, substitute. Uh, you guys probably knew that. Um, Dragon Dance, Dragon Claw, Fire Punch. So I can set up a sub potentially on things like a Gorgast or maybe like if a switch is pretty obvious, like um, he doesn't want perhaps Tentacruel or Mew to take damage and the switch is pretty obvious and then I can click substitute <coughs> I guess I excuse me I guess I didn't really need another move I guess Roost could have been pretty fine but I didn't really need it so I was fine with not having it um, and opted for substitute instead so that a um, Thunder Wave Clef Key uh, with Prankster couldn't be like a a semi check to uh, Charizard, like, you know, just Thunder Waving it for the later part of the match. And this Charizard sets at uh, 258 speed. What that allows me to outspeed on his team is actually quite a few different things. Um, if he's like an adamant Altaria. Then um, I could potentially outspeed that. Uh, just depends. Um, and then, like, the rest of his team, like Mew, Talonflame, and Terrakion, all outspeed. Tentacruel and Mew speed tie, so I didn't really want to mess with those. Mega Altaria was the uh, most notable that I wanted to um, speed creep, so I sped creep and adamant. Mega Altaria, I'm pretty sure. Um, Adam at max speed, Mega Altaria. Uh, I sped crept that. Um, then I was able to go Adam at myself and put, uh, yeah, max attack and a little bit of um, special defense investment, a little bit more than defense investments because I needed it more um, for things like, um, let me just get back to it, Mew, Tentacruel. Um, clef key even to an extent and then the rest was basically for like uh, the defense and HP investment was for things like Talonflame and Gorgast to an extent um, can't take a hit from Terrakion period point blank if it's a rock type attack that is and then um, yeah this thing uh, yeah like it just puts in a lot of work once Mega Altaria is gone um, puts in a ton of work and uh, probably have to scout for like a choice scarf to rack you on. So that's noteworthy in my opinion. Um, 
And if I was to be able to get up a sub on a switch and then Dragon Dance as something uh, hits me but can't break my sub and I can get up another Dragon Dance as he breaks my sub, then I'm in a position to just say, uh, good game if Mega Altaria is out. Otherwise, Mega Altaria can still uh, maybe take a hit depending on how much HP it has and how much hazards you're up. Um, speaking of hazards... Fortress here is my third mon. This is when I decided um, I needed a check to a Dragon Dance and Mega Altaria myself, as he does need checks to Calm Mind Suicune and Dragon Dance Charizard. So I needed a check to some of his threats. Um, Spikes, Gyro Ball, Volk Switch, and Rapid Spin. Pretty standard set and pretty standard EV spread. Um, I got a little bit of uh, EVs in attack because Gyro Ball is guaranteed to do like 55% always doing over half after a Mega Altaria Dragon Dances so you know the faster it gets the more damage it's doing but uh, after one Dragon Dance I always do over half and I have the Akaberry there in the case of the uh, Fire Blast on that um, which is very likely um, I have the Volt Switch just because he doesn't really have a ground type outside of Pillow Swine, which uh, is a very likely bring, but at the same time, um, I have a lot of ways to answer it myself. So, uh, so Volt Switch was just, you know, a, a no drawback move here because I can click it most of the game, keep up momentum. Um, I do have Baton Pass as well in this match, so Volt Switch and Baton Pass keep momentum up, um, keep spikes up. Stealth rocks up later in the mat or later in the uh, team here. I'll explain. I do have rocks in this game. Um, and Rapid Spin for Charizard's benefit, as well as for uh, Frostlass's benefit, since you know it doesn't like rocks either. Um, nothing else really to say about this thing. Like I said, it can uh, just bolt switch out on you, bolt switch out on Tentacruel, bolt switch on a little muck. Gorgas can just volt switch out on it as it could uh, be a likely spin blocker. It can volt switch on the Talon Flame if it wants to go for Flare Blitz. Um, I do have Akaberry and I do have Sturdy, so if I do get that knocked off, and um, like I don't expect him to think that uh, I would be like. I guess Akaberry does make sense this match. Actually, it makes a lot of sense. So maybe he does expect me to be Akaberry. Um But, yeah, so. Uh, so that was. Um, this is my first hazard setter. Um, most likely, I'm going to be able to get up both hazards because he has some mons that I can always set up hazards on. Like, I can always set up my spikes on, like, an Alola Muck or Gorgast or Klefki or anything like that. I can always set them up. Nothing can kill me in one hit. So I can always set up my hazards. And then that's why um, I, I did opt to bring hazards today. I didn't bring target spikes this match because he does have uh, two absorbers. And um, he does have a way to get rid of hazards. So it is the winner of the Hazard War will most likely win the mat the battle, uh, in my opinion. That's uh that's how I approached this match once I started uh, diving into my prep. Um, obviously this is a very standard set though, so we can move on to uh, and it's pretty self-explanatory as well. So we can move on to Metacham here. It's a, another choice scarf set. This week I'm rocking the Adamant Nature because I can afford to. Um, again, I speed creep a Adamant Mega Altaria by one point, same as Mega Charizard X here, so that um, even after a Dragon Dance, I can outspeed um, Mega Metagem, or or I mean Mega Altaria. Um, hmm, I'm not sure. Um. I'm thinking if I'm speed tying or if I'm speed creeping. Because I think Mega Altaria sets at level 100 at 257. If it's adamant, I want to say. But I feel like... I feel like Mammoth Swine sets 
at 259 if it's adamant. I'm thinking I may have just made an error that was corrected before the actual battle. Um, I'm not sure though, but uh, that's something I can dive into um, at another time. Um, anyways, adamant nature, high jump kicks just uh, wreak havoc once Gorgas is gone, which is why I do have the baton pass. As long as Gorgas is around in the match, I will just click baton pass or Zen headbutt and maybe even ice punch. So, depending on what he has in, like if he's got the um, tentacle in or the Mega Altaria in, and if he's got the tentacle left, then I wouldn't lock myself in the ice punch. It'd be, you know, more sensible to lock myself into Zen headbutt if he had something like the Mega Altaria tentacle and the Gorgas left, even though ice punch knocked out. The majority of them, Zen headbutt does more to, you know, all of them in, you know, a combination. Potentially knock out all three of them, depending on, you know, the range and whatnot. Anyways, um, yeah, basically this thing just gets momentum or gets a kill um, once the Mew and the Gorgast are gone, that is. Um, yeah, and didn't really need to, uh, I guess everything else was unspeed creepable, if that's the word. Couldn't speed creep them, is what I'm trying to say. And... I guess that's really it. His potential choice scarfers. Most most notably would probably be Terrakion, like I said. Maybe Tentacruel and Mew, potentially. Maybe. Probably not. Um, probably Terrakion. But uh but yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be Medicham there. Um Power pure power love it anyways next up is gypsy himself the stun fisk rocking the pasho berry in case in case i'm in a position where i have to let this thing stay in against tentacruel i do have the pasho berry so that the first scald or surf won't do um nearly as much as it should And um, I could be able to potentially not be three hit KO'd. Potentially, maybe. It just depends on his investment. Stealth Rock, for you know, obviously, just because Stealth Rocks are, it's a necessity in Mons, in my opinion. I think Rocks really make the difference, you know, securing Okos and two hit KOs and shit like that. Um, pressuring teams to lose a turn to. Uh, remove hazards or something um discharge obviously has the 30 percent chance to paralyze earth power has the 10 percent chance to spit f drop and that's basically the only two moves that i needed the only mon that doesn't have a problem with this really is um gorgast but i do pack the toxic so that's a little problematic for him um toxic is also my answer to mew so if i'm in a position where um, I see Mew click Calm Mind, I switch out to this thing and I click Toxic because um, I think he's going to opt to not run Substitute because um, that's if he clicks Calm Mind first and then if he clicks Sub first then the goal is to break the sub and then Toxic him so uh, that's uh, important um, I think I think Rocks plus earth power, two earth powers, should be able to put things like Klefki, Alolan Muk, Terrakion, Tentacruel, um, in range of all my other mons um, that would come in and revenge kill, something like that. Um, I think that's all for good old Stunfisk. Um, next up, Frostlass, uh, aka Banshee, with the Cobra Berry, because things like Tentacruel, Alolan Muck, and um, even things like Klefki, which could be a, you know, I could lead this, he could lead Klefki, and we would have problems because uh, he could potentially carry the foul play, which is not a problem in terms of my, you know, attack stat, but it uh, still does a lot, so there's that. 
I pack the Will O' Wisp for things like a little muck, um, Tentacruel even, Klefki even, Pillowswan, I guess, um, Terrakion, even Gorgast. I guess Will O' Wisp is just really good against his team. Shadow Ball, Ice Beam is pretty good coverage against his, his entire team. Um, I guess a little muck and Tentacruel kind of just eat my hits for days, and I guess even to an extent Klefki does. Um, and lastly, I do have the Destiny Bond with the Curse Body ability, and like I said, the Cobra Berry. I have enough speed to outpace the Terrakion, and then max special attack, and dump the rest in HP just because of um, no real reason behind that. Um, yeah, I think this thing can put in a lot of work. Also, things like uh, things like Mew, Mega Altaria could be in a position where that they're about to. They're set up but can't Oko me, and they click, you know, uh, Mew, for example, click a plus two Psy Shark or Mega Altaria plus one uh, return or something like that. And I live, click Destiny Bond, and force them to not attack me on the following turn so that I could, you know, react to the situation better. Or, um, Force a you know maybe an extra turn of toxic or maybe force a switch and then stealth rocks and uh, spikes you know chime in and you know break out the damage that they should have been doing all match stuff like that. But yeah, that's gonna be it for the team. Uh, this is the six uh, that I chose to bring this match. Um, obviously, every match is uh, have a potential rematch in the uh, playoffs. So not taking the prep extremely uh, ridiculous, you know, like setting my mind into it and just like marinating like I would uh, for a playoff match or something. But uh, nonetheless, I do think this is a pretty solid team to take on my opponent. And uh, yeah, so other than that, I guess I could um, just talk about... Uh, Talk about my opponent's first two games, um, where he did uh, win very narrow games, uh, 1-0 apiece, um, where Mew and Terrakion has put in the most work, and then the other Mons uh, really fulfilling their role. So he's, he's adapting to this uh, draft format meta really good, and uh, we're going to give him a run for his money in his Week 3 match. And he's actually got a pretty solid uh, next... Uh, you know, week three, four, five, and six are going to be some notable players that have played in lots and lots of draft league format. So uh, he's going to be truly contested. Uh, other, uh, nothing else to say. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just going to uh, hop on out of here. So uh, peace out, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed my, you know, my rambling about my team here. Um, comment maybe what you would have did differently or what you would have did the same, et cetera, et cetera. And... Uh, I guess that'll be all. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.